Welcome to Excel Works video series. This is part two of the demonstration of Excel Advanced and Unique Partial Differential Equation Solver PDE Solve. In part one of this presentation, we introduced PDE Solve using a simple one equation PDE system. Now we will demo how easy as well to use PDE Solve for a complex multi equation multi region PDE system. Our second example is derived from a simplistic battery model. It has three equations equation one shown here corresponds to the system variable phi1 and is defined in the cathode region between 0 and LC. Equation 2 corresponds to the uh, system variable phi2 and is defined in all three regions. Equation 3 corresponds to the system variable phi3 and is defined in the anode region to the right only. The time derivatives of the state variables phi1, 2 and 3 are coupled by a mass matrix which is shown here in red. The three equations depend on the function a of x which is shown here in green and takes a different value in each of the regions. Equations 1 and 2 also depend on the forcing term f of t and x which is shown here in purple. The property k for equation 2 shown here in blue is a discontinuous function of x. As you see it takes the value 1 in the cathode and anode regions but takes the value 2 in the center region. Therefore it's necessary to impose a continuity condition for phi 2 flux at both x equal LC and x equal LS which separate the three regions. Also because each of the three equations is second order since they depend on a second derivative we can see here phi 1 xx, phi 2 xx and phi 3 xx. We need two boundary conditions for each equation. The boundary conditions and the initial conditions are all shown in the figure right here. The system parameters include the geometrical coordinates LC, LS and LA uh, which take the numerical values shown on the left right here. Know that I've also chosen to define two extra parameters, beta and mc, which appear in the function a of x and m, instead of just hard coding their numerical values in the equation. This will allow us to optimize the system, as we will show later. Despite the system looking complicated, it's actually straightforward to model and solve in Excel, as I will show next. The slide on the left actually shows the complete model and solution of the PDE system we just described. I started by naming the system variables in the green range, T, X, Phi1, Phi2, Phi3, followed by their first and second derivatives. It's important that the variables are passed to the solver in this exact order. I've also assigned initial conditions for Phi1, 2, and 3. Here we have constant initial conditions, but in general they can be any function of X. I've also named cells D2 to D6 as LC, ls, la, beta, and mc for the system parameters and define their numerical values. The mass matrix m is defined in the yellow range right here. Now before I can define the system equations, I first need to define the functions a, f, and k they depend upon, which I have done in cells b15, 16, and 17 using standard Excel f function. Now it's very easy to define the system right hand side equations in terms of my named variables and functions which I did in the blue range B20 to B22. In the orange range to the right of my equations I define the valid region for each of the equations. The boundary conditions are defined in the pink range A30 to C37. Each boundary condition shown in the figure is defined in a row recording its location, type and formula. The formula is always written with respect to zero on one side. Here we have a combination of Dirichlet and Newman boundary conditions, as well as two continuity conditions on phi2 flux at x equal LC and LS, as shown here. This is pretty much all is needed to model the system in Excel. Now we just pass these colored ranges to PDE Solve and run it as an array formula in an allocated range of sufficient size to hold the solution. Let us demo this live in Excel next. To enable PDE Solve in Excel, you need to download and install Excelab Calculus add-in from excel-works.com. I have prepared the input to PDE Solve in the color ranges. We can show the formulas briefly here. We are ready to run the solver. One question that people ask is, how do I know what size range I need to allocate for the solver? You can make the array as big as you desire, but you can't go smaller than a minimum size. This minimum size is determined by your model geometrical points. This include your spatial domain endpoints, regions definitions, and location of boundary conditions. An easy way to find out the minimum size is to try to run the solver in a single cell. Let's try that first. I define PDE solve formula. My first argument is my equations. My second argument is my variables. My third argument is my boundary conditions. My fourth argument is my x domain. My fifth argument is my t domain. My sixth argument is my mass matrix. 
My seventh argument is my regions definition. I'm going to skip over the eighth optional argument for the tolerances and jump to the optional control parameters to define a transient format for the solution. I press enter and as you see we get an error message and it tells us that too few columns are allocated for output at least 13 columns are needed. So this is an easy way to find the minimum size you need. I'm going to go back and allocate a larger array. I click on the cell, expand the range with 13 columns, go back and click in my formula bar and then press Control shift enter to run the solver as an array formula. It runs and it populates the range with the solution. To generate the transient plot shot here, I simply highlight my T points, the columns I'm interested in plotting. In this case, it's phi2 at x equals 0, phi2 at x equal LC, phi2 at x equal LS, and phi2 at x equal LA. And then I can insert a scatter plot, and we get exactly the plot shown here. In the third part of this presentation, we will demonstrate more advanced features of PDE Solve, as well as the powerful three-step optimization process in XC Lab. The plot on the left shows the computed solution of phi2 at x equals c and the actual measured values. Clearly, our model with the default values for beta and mc does not do a good job matching the measured values. I will show how easy it is to find the optimal values for beta and mc to obtain the desired solution shown on the right. Thank you for watching the second part of this presentation. Make sure to watch the third part as well, which we'll be playing next. You'll also find more solved examples at excel-works.com.